Hello guys, welcome back to a new from the channel. Today's time for finally another episode of how to make Super Mario Galaxy custom levels. It's been a very long time since I've done one of these kind of videos. So I thought, why not do another episode? I'm gonna split this up in two parts because I'm gonna handle or I'm gonna talk about how to make your own models. You've already seen a model on the screen for like half a minute or something. That's the model that we're gonna create in these two videos because i'm gonna split it up in two parts part 5.1 and 5.2 i'm gonna call those that in the first part we're gonna create the actual model you know the base of the model without any textures or anything and we're gonna do materials and in the second part we're gonna do vertex paint and how to convert your model to an actual object in the game so yeah Hopefully you're all excited for it. Let's get started. All right, so you might have noticed that our object or our planet, sorry, is kind of like a disc shape. It's, uh, well, a disc is normally really flat, but now it's kind of an inflated disc or whatever. But if you look at the top left here, by the way, I'm using Blender version uh, 2.79.6. I'll leave a link. To it in the description um so yeah you can download it and follow with this tutorial even better but if you look at the left here you can see that we don't have any disc object that we can add or something but a disc is actually just a cylinder but then you know smoothened out or something but i'm not going to use a cylinder i'm going to use a circle so in uh, the create tab you're going to go to circle click on that and i'm just gonna leave the vertices at 32 and i'm gonna set the radius at 600 and that makes a pretty big circle uh, you can also add in a circle by uh, shift a and then mesh and then circle It's uh, the exact same thing doesn't really matter But yeah, now we've added a circle and Now we're gonna add the height and That's really simple to do uh, For that we basically do uh, press E and then Z and then minus 150 and that just makes it um, well, it makes the the thickness or something of the planet. Uh, by the way, if you can't extrude for some reason, uh, that's because you have the face select mode uh, on. Because if you select everything and you have the face select mode on, and if you press E, then nothing happens. It just moves the well the the circle. If you have the edge select mode then it will go fine but i recommend you do the vertex select mode so z minus 50 or 150 sorry and then you can pretty much fill out the bottom and the top um just you can select the entire ring with alt and then right click on one of the vertices and that will select the entire ring you can also do it vertically just a little trick or whatever uh, by the way, if you uh, filled the circle first, so if you have the circle and then press F first and then you extrude it down, uh, minus 150, then you might notice something, but the, uh, that the faces are pointing inwards, because if I zoom in, then you see that I'm actually, well, the faces are pointing inwards, and that's not what we want. Uh, if you want, if you want to know how to fix that, just select the entire mesh and then press ctrl n or that's ctrl b ctrl n and there you go now they're pointing all outwards and yeah that's pretty much it for um the, the circle now you might notice that the shading looks very flat it looks very harsh well to fix that we're gonna go into the to the left to the tools tab and we're gonna select smooth shading and that looks not very good still but we're gonna fix that by doing the following we're going to edit mode again and then we're gonna go into edge select mode and we're gonna press alt and then right click on this and right click on the bottom too um, if you select everything 
then it will screw up the next step, which is that we're going to bevel um, the those two um, edges to make it like the smooth curvature of the of the disc. So you can always go to the modifiers tab here with the wrench icon and add modifier and then bevel. But don't do that. Just do the following instead because. Yeah, you can see it's gone back to that horrible shading. Um, just select the edges that you want to bevel and press, sorry, Control B in edit mode. Uh, and then we're gonna type in 75. And now you can see it's already a little bit smoother, but it's still really blocky, which is not what we want. So to fix that, we're gonna scroll with our mouse wheel until the segments at the bottom you can see segments is at three at the bottom you can see offset is 75 and then segments is at three so make sure the segments is at three and then press enter or just left click and there we go now we have a smooth disc but the shading is pretty terrible in the middle and that's because there are vertices that are overlapping uh, which is horrible in models um, if you have any vertices that are overlapping, get rid of them. Unless you want this kind of shading, this harsh shading, then you can keep in the overlapping vertices. But if you don't want any hard shading, you just want smooth shading, then you can just select the entire mesh, press W and then press remove doubles. And now, if you can see at the top here, remove 32 vertices. And there we go, it just cleaned up the smooth, or the harsh shading issue. And yeah, now we have a pretty good disc, but we're still not done because if you've noticed, there's a little separation between the grass and the soil. How to make that? Well, that's really simple. We're gonna go into edge select mode again, and then we're gonna select this ring, select the middle ring of um, edges, then we're going to, jeez, I can't talk for some reason. Okay, then we're going to press Control B again to bevel it. And then we're going to type in 20. And then make sure the segments is at 2. And then just left click or press enter. And then we're going to press the middle ring of edges again. And now we're going to press S and then point 98. And there we go. We have uh, made a little separation. But this is still one object. How do we separate the grass and the soil in different objects? Well, that's really simple. In the face select mode, just select or press Alt and click in the middle of two edges. And that selects the entire, well, the entire row of faces. And then just pretty much repeat it until you've selected the bottom half of the mesh. You can also go into front view and uh, orthographic view and then press Z to go into wireframe and then select the bottom half of mesh but this works too and then we're gonna press P and then uh, select by selection and there we go the top half and the bottom half are now separated and yes you may notice that the shading is well really harsh again but there's no way to fix that unless you um, well, you basically join the, well, the two separate objects back together and then remove the double vertices. But we're going to leave it like this because um, it's good to have each uh, material. So grass, soil, wood, uh, stone, and all of that separated into each object. But yeah, that's basically the base of the mesh. Now we're going to create the fence. To create the fence, we are... Well, we're not going to do every single fence individually, like uh, create one fence and then place it just right in here. No, we're going to do it procedurally as it's called. So to do that, we're going to add in a circle again and we're going to change radius from 600 to 580. Um, I'm not going to explain why, just just do it, okay? Um, just, well, just to explain it in one sentence. Um, if you change it to 580, then the fence will not stick out of the 
of this little uh, separation like that you can see well okay you know what let's just move on <laughs> all right well now we have a circle and now we're gonna move it down by some minus 75 and now I can see the circle anymore but it's still there see it's still there all right now we're gonna add in a cube with a radius of uh, 30 and then we're gonna move it up by well by 30 and we're gonna scale it on the x-axis by uh, 0.45 and it already starts to look like a fence but a fence is normally like that and really pointy at the top so to make that we're gonna select the top face press E to extrude and we're gonna type in 50 to move it up by 50 oh my microphone almost fell okay <laughs> and then we're gonna select the air well we're gonna select the edge select mode and then we're gonna select this edge and this edge and then we're gonna press ctrl B and then make sure the segments is at 1 and then we're gonna type in 30 and there we go it already looks like a fence but by beveling it with 30 we uh, have made vertices that are overlapping so we're going to remove the doubles again um, by pressing w and then remove doubles and that has fixed the issue it looks a little bit thick i guess that's how that's when you i don't know how you want to call it i'm just gonna call it thick i'm gonna scale it down on a y-axis by i think 0.75 i think that looks a whole lot better uh, you can also delete this face if you want just to save on uh, tries because you have to keep an eye on the amount of tries that you have because super mario galaxy or well the wii can handle like i think around 4000 400,000 tries in total maybe even more i don't know but uh, if you have a planet that has like 45 50,000 tries then um, i suggest you try to remodel it or just remove some of the geometry that you can see like the bottom face because if you look from here or even from here or yeah whatever you can see the the bottom face and also you can just uh, press well you can select everything press x and then limit it dissolve and that has removed eight tries if you look at the top here see from 22 to 14 uh, all it did is just really remove this um edge or ring of edges or row of edges i don't know how you want to call it but yeah, that is basically the, uh, well, one fence part, whatever. Now we're going to make it so it is across the entire um, outside of the circle. To do that, we're going to add in a, well, we're going to go to the modifiers tab and we're going to add in a, an array modifier and a curve modifier. Um, because if you remember correctly, we just added that circle that you can see. But if I remove this, hey, there we go, this circle. And we want that fence to follow that entire circle. To do that, we're going to go into the uh, curve modifier. And we're going to select the circle from the object. But it's not here. What? Why is it not in this little drop down menu? Well, that's because the circle is not a curve. The modifier is called curve, and that's because it only uh, works with curves. But how do we make the circle into a curve? Well, that's freaking simple to do. Just select the circle, and then we're going to press Alt, C, and then curve from mesh. Select that, and now if you go into the curve modifier, there we go. The circle is there. And just select it and it automatically slam, snap, gee, snapped to the position of the, of the circle. Now we're going to go into the array modifier. I'm going to set fixed count to uh, fit curve. And we're going to select the circle again. And that is not really what we want. And to fix that, we're going to 
press R and then X and then uh, minus 90. And that is already a little bit more close, but the fences are way too close to each other. So to fix that, we're gonna go to the relative offset. I'm gonna type in 4.1. And there we go, that is looking really good. But I feel like the fences should be rotated like this because now I think they sh they're better when they're like, I don't know, I don't, uh, yeah, whatever. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go into edit mode, then select the entire mesh, and then press R, Y, and then type in 90, and there we go, that looks a whole lot better for, in my opinion. You can leave it like uh, what we had before, but yeah, I think this looks better. And uh, yeah, that's basically how we make the fence. So we can apply these modifiers. And yeah, that was actually really simple to do. Um, also, I'm going to smooth out the shading. And I'm going to add an edge split modifier and apply it. And then we're going to select the circle or curve. I don't know how you want to call it. And then we're gonna press Alt C and then mesh from curve, because what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do now, is create the little, well, fence board that's in between the fences. I don't know how you want to call it, but now I'm just gonna call it fence board. Um, we're gonna go to edit mode, select the entire mesh, and then press S and then 1.04. Uh, is that right? Uh, I'm actually gonna do like 1.12 and then uh, yeah I think that should be fine that's gonna be the high highest point of the fence board then we're gonna press E and then S and then point 94 and that that is that is perfect okay but it doesn't have any height and it's also invisible from the from the bottom. So to fix that, we're gonna go into edit mode, press G, Z, and then we're gonna move it up by five, I guess, and then press E to extrude, then Z twice, I guess, and then minus 10. And that is looking pretty good, but the faces are pointing inwards again. Uh, yeah, you already know how to fix that. Just select the entire mesh, press Ctrl N. And I'm gonna smooth out the shading and apply the edge split modifier. And there we go. That is how you make the base uh, model. Now we're gonna add the materials. So, um, yeah, how do we do that? How do we add the materials? Well, that's actually really simple. And by materials, I also mean textures uh, and images and all of that. So we're gonna select the uh, the top half, which is the grass, um, this, this top half. And then we're gonna go into this tab, the material tab, press new, and then we're gonna rename it to grass just to keep it organized. And I'm also gonna rename this to grass Keep it organized, you know. And then we're gonna go into the texture tab and press the new button. And then we have to select an image. And I'm just gonna do like real quick. Um, I'm gonna see you in a sec once I find the image. So see you in a sec. All right, and I have found the image. It's called Surface Pattern 18. Yoko B, I don't know how you want to call it or how you want to say it. And there we go. We have just applied the texture. I'm just going to call this. I'm just going to call this the same as the image. Uh, but nothing has happened. Why is that? Well, that's because we are still in solid view. We have to switch to material view and bam, it's still not looking great. But it has the color of the grass. But how do we actually make it so that the texture is applied correctly well for that we need to unwrap the the mesh 
So we're going to go to edit mode and then select the whole mesh and then press U and then unwrap. And there we go. Now it is looking really, really good. But I feel like it's a little bit too zoomed in. So we're going to go into edit mode. So make sure the entire mesh is selected and then we're going to go into the top here and then switch from default to UV editing. And uh, let me just switch to material view again. And we're going to select the whole thing and then press S and then I think uh, 2.5 should be okay. And that is looking a whole lot better. Um, and then we're going to do that for the, well, for the, the soil and the wood. So I guess you know how to do it now that I showed you how to do it. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, and I'm back. I've just done the entire model. And yeah, um, as you can see, I've done the fence too. Uh, the fence and the fence board basically have the same texture, but I think that that's okay. I still think it's a little bit too zoomed in. So I'm gonna zoom it out by two and then select this. And zoom it out by two two <laughs> and there we go that's a whole lot better and yeah that's basically how you do materials and uh, it's really simple um, the only maybe really painful thing to do is if you have a really complex shape and then unwrapping like you press you and unwrap doesn't work that well uh, maybe you can get away with smart UV project uh, which looks uh, like this Doesn't really work for this uh, shape But uh, yeah But yeah, that was it for this first part. Uh, I don't know how long it was um, it is 25 minutes <laughs> That's a little bit long, but whatever I had to explain quite some stuff But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this part and in the next part like I said, we're gonna do uh, vertex coloring which is basically adding uh, shading so darkness and all of that and we're gonna convert our model to an actual object that you can place in the game so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe and also make sure to hit that notification bell because um why not i mean come on <laughs> i need views that's not a joke but whatever Thank you, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next part, or video. Goodbye!